Hi, this is Kante Karamet, and I'm the unique convener for NIT2102 Cybersecurity Essentials. Today, we will see how we can practice SQL injection attack using DVWA app. The first thing is um, SQL injection is one of the popular attacks behind the different data leaks that we often see on the internet and the dark web. It includes um, user emails, usernames, passwords, even credit card information. So attacker use SQL injection attack to steal this information. This attack needs um, often leads to um, even sometimes reputational damage and loss of revenue in like, regulatory fines. In other cases, attacker can escalate the SQL injection attack and create a persistent backdoor. Now, it's important first to understand how an SQL injection attack works. Let's have a look of an example. Think of a website with a single login form with two fields, a username, password, and a login or submit button. So after you enter the required credential, when you hit the submit button, the query sent to the database has the following syntax, has this syntax, for example. So you can see it's a SQL, select username, comma, password from user DB, where username equals to user. So for example, if the name is John Doe, then what will be the query? Select username, password from userDB, where username equals to John Doe. Now, an attacker can manipulate um, this query to reveal or modify the database contents. So let's look at an example, again, the same example, but as you can see, um, where username equals to we put um, ABC within the uh, uh, apostrophe or 1 equals to 1 then dash dash and what does it mean ABC here we just guessed any username but we added um, single quote at the end the single quote closes our username field and the following part becomes an SQL query or is a conjunction in SQL that means if username is ABC or something else. Now in the OR side we put 1 equals to 1. So that means it is always true no matter what you put in the username field. So what will happen the query will be always true and return all the records of the user TV database. The dash dash or double dash is a comment in SQL so it tells the SQL server not to execute any query after this point so in this case uh, the double dash basically commenting out any errors that may arise because of the trailing single code at the end it is also possible to use hash instead of double dash. Now I believe we have a good understanding of what SQL injection is at this point. So let's um, uh, try uh, it using DBWA app. So as usual, we are logging to Kali Linux using the credentials OS boxes and osboxes.org and our meta exploitable is also running and therefore through the browser using the IP address of the meta exploitable we can access the DVWA app now the credentials for DVWA app is admin is the username and the password is the password now after a successful login you will see the DVWA main page First, first, click on the DVWA security on the bottom left 
set security to low and click submit on the left section of the page um, we can see the various vulnerable pages to exploit we select sql injection or sql injection we should see a page similar to this now on the sql injection page we can click the view source button at the bottom right that will open a page with the sql injection source code written in php when we go through the code we will see a line like query equals to select first name last name from users where user id equals to id this is the vulnerable line of code at the end of the line we can see the user input is concatenated to the sql query without being validated and that allows us to pass arbitrary commands into the database so let's get started on the sql injection page we have a user id field when we enter number one the application returns the first name and surname of the user id with one and in that case the first name is admin and surname is also admin if we continue trying numbers like two three four and five we still get an output however any number from six does not return anything therefore our web app has only five users behind the scenes the sql query that that will execute in the database is select first name last name from users where id equals to one other than using the user id field we can also use the url to pass our queries when we first enter id1 and click submit the url look like this the injectable part in this url is the id field let's say if we look at the um, browser url now the id is equals to 4 because um, it currently currently it is returning pablo picasso if we change the id from let's say 4 to 1 it will return the first user which is admin admin so let's bring it back to again Again, we change the ID equals to four. So you can see it becomes Pablo Picasso. So that means this um, ID field in the URL is the vulnerable part. Now let's um, try to do a true injection attack. We talked about it at the beginning of this video that how we can manipulate a SQL query and make it um, and launch an attack um, let's say we would like to enter an input like test single quote ending quote or one equals to one hash so we, are, we will now put this part in the user id field so therefore what will happen this part will be concatenated with the first part of the sql query that we saw before in the in, in, in the beginning of the video or also from the view source so let's give it a try now when we submit the button it returns the username and surname of all users in the database so the query will display all records because that are true or false the first parameter 
test single code will probably not be equal to any user in the database will equal to false. But the second part, which is 1 equals to 1, will be always true. And the hash sign to comments out any SQL code or error. The query that executes in the database ultimately looks like this. And therefore, it returns all of the users in the database. All right. Now you would like to know the name of the database. By knowing the name of the database, we'll be able to send successfully many malicious SQL queries. And most web application technologies like Java, ASP.NET, PHP, etc. can give us a vivid idea of the database power in the web system. Now, to know the RDBMS, for example, Relational Database Management System, we need to enter something. And in this case, we enter a single code, and that returns an error. Now, from this error, we can see the name of the database. And the database is a MySQL. So that means it is using a MySQL Relational Database Management, database management System. Management system. This error gave us the RDBMS name, but not the version. Now in MySQL, we have two queries that we can use to return the database database version. Select version and select add, add version. What we are going to do, we are going to use this command. So we will put test single quote union. Now again, the first part will be false test single code, but union, and then select now, comma, version, parenthesis, hash. This will give us the name of the um, version. Now you can see uh, the name of the version of, uh, of the version of the uh, MySQL database is 5.0.51a and so on. Now let's say we would like to know the host name of our web app. To get the host name on MySQL, we use the double add host name query. So what you are going to put, single quote, union, select now, comma, at, at, host name, hash. This will return us the name of the host. And the name of the host is Meta exploitable in this case. Please note that in your case the host name could be different. Now we would like to know the database user, database user name. To know the database user, we'll enter the input as we can see in the user ID field. It will be test single quote union select null comma user. Um, first pair, I mean, parenthesis, hash. We are using now to make the starting query valid. All right, so from the output above, we can see the host name under the surname as root at localhost. The next thing, let's say we would like to do is display the database name. To get the database name, we we'll use the database uh, function in our SQL query. Please note that this is not the RDBMS but the database on which our web app is running. So the query will be test single code union select null database you know parenthesis and hash. Now once we put it and press submit um, hash and then submit. Now we can see the name of under the sun name, the name of the database is DVWA. Now let's say we would like to um, list all the table in the information schema. All right. So what we are going to do, we are going to put this query where it is test single code and one equals to zero union select null comma table underscore name from information underscore schema dot tables hash. So the tables, all, all of the name of the tables will be listed under surname once we submit. 
So we can see the table names are character set, collations, collection character set, applicability, columns, etc. Now let's say we would like to list all user tables in the information schema. So to display all user tables, we will start in the information schema database, enter the um, query like this, all right? Um, we have test single code n1 equals to zero union select null comma table underscore name from information underscore schema dot tables where table underscore name like notice table underscore name like user I mean within the single code user percentage hash so this will um, return the user tables and all the user tables will be listed under the surname field and you can see the user tables are user privileges users and so on and so forth now let's say what we want to do and list all column fields in the information schema of the users table specifically so what we will be using is and let me make it bigger yeah so test single code and one equals to zero select now comma concate table underscore name zero x zero a column underscore name from information schema dot column so at table underscore name equals to users because we know the name of all the, of the tables and we would like to know the column name of the users once we submit it it returns all the column names the column names are user id first name last name user and so on now let's say we would like to display all the column contents in the information schema of the users table this is much more interesting we will display all the authentication information of all users in the database and uh, that includes password hashes enter the password hashes. so we will enter this query so we are telling the name of the um, column because we know the column so you put all the column name um, so from users table all right and once we submit we can see all of the values of the um, under the sun name we can see you know from the output above here we can see the hashed password we can go ahead and crack the hash to reveal the actual password some of the password cracking tools that come in the hand in handy include john the reaper and medusa there are also websites where we can paste the password hash to reveal the actual password so in this um, password now how to prevent um, sql injection attacks the main reason that makes web application applications vulnerable to sql injection attacks back to the development stage i mean coding stage so here are some factors developers um, should consider to develop secure web systems validate user input limit the use of special characters such as string concatenation use stored procedures in the database actively install security patches and updates implement a web application firewall and harden the operating system and applications now thank you very much for watching this video this just gives some of the examples um, all what you need to do is um, you know try different things um, to play around to learn more.